Welcome back, Alaska. Michael Lives here with your Saturday sports. And while the Sochi Olympic Games are on and drawing the world's attention, we have some great sporting events happening right here in the interior. So we'll get to the Olympics here in a little bit, but let's start with ice action right here in Fairbanks. It's tournament time for prep hockey across the state, and the interior will be sending some teams to Wasilla for the 2014 First National Cup. The Monroe Rams beat Glen Allen yesterday to punch their ticket as Great Land Conference representatives. Then it was the Mid-Alaska Conference's time to throw down. It was Lathrop and North Pole taking the ice first, and it would be a goalie display early. Patriot keeper Alan Heineken and Malamute goalie Ryan Ebenall trade stops before Lathrop starts finding the twine. Defensiveman Colton Meyer puts a turnover past Heineken for a shorthanded tally. Arthur Edgren gets a redirect in front of the net for another Lathrop goal, and the Malamutes get a 2-0 win to advance. Then the number one seeded Wolfpack would face the Juno Crimson Bears for a spot in that MAC title game. Mike Olson gets the pack on the board in the first period, and though Juno would not make it easy on West Valley, the Wolfpack grinds out a 3-1 win as Stoshi Skorolski and Ethan Daniels score to help push, push West Valley into a MAC final dog bowl matchup. We will have results and highlights on tomorrow's special newscast. Hockey Week in Fairbanks concludes this weekend at the Big Dipper as the Ice Dogs host the rival Wenatchee Wild. This three-game series has the Ice Dogs up 2-0 after wins Thursday and Friday night, with a chance to sweep tonight at the Big Dipper. It was all Ice Dogs last night as they blast the Wild 6-3 thanks to two goals from Brett Gervais and Ethan Somoza. It's Somoza's first career NAHL two-goal game. Kyle Lee and Doogie Lagrone would also score for the Ice Dogs, and they march into Saturday night's contest with back-to-back -back wins over Wenatchee. Kevin Aldridge gets another win in net as he stops 29 of the 32 shots that he faced. Now to Birch Hill, where the prep cross-country championships are being held. It was nice racing weather at Birch, and the West Valley Wolfpack takes a day one lead in both girls and boys combined scores, with the Lathrop Malamutes in second place. The Malamutes, however, got a big win in the boys' 10K Classic as senior Sam King outsprinted West Valley's Ben Koenig to the finish line. The Wolfpack would get an overall win in the girls' 7.5K as freshman Jenna DeFalco paced the pack for an individual win. The teams are back on the hills of Birch for today's final relays. Now, Alaska Nanook cross-country skiing is in Michigan competing in the Central Collegiate Ski Association Championships. Nanook Jr. skier Logan Hahnemann was the big winner today as he claimed first place overall in the men's 10K Classic race, and he helped the Nanook men climb to second in the point standing overall. They're only four points behind the leader, Northern Michigan. The men's races will conclude on Sunday. Nanook women's skiing sits in fourth place after two days of racing, and they've been missing their top skier, freshman Nicole Baith, who is in Italy competing in the World Junior Championships. The women's races also end on Sunday. Now with the 2014 Sochi Olympics officially underway after yesterday's opening ceremonies, we take a look at an American medal favorite who calls Alaska home. Keegan Randall will try to do something a member of Team USA has never done, win a women's cross-country skiing medal. And Anchorage's Randall isn't looking to just medal, but to stand atop the podium holding gold. Randall comes into these Sochi Olympics as the world's best sprint skier after winning back-to-back -back world championships. This is Randall's fourth Olympic appearance, but her first as a top medal favorite. With the cross-country events getting underway and Randall's important sprint races just days away, she tells us about her excitement for these Sochi Games. They've made some uh, slight refinements to the trail, and I think uh, I was excited to see the finish line bump up a little bit. Uh, so uh, the trails are looking great. Um, I feel, fitness is feeling really good, so it's been great to get out and, and preview the trails, and everything looks really good. The Olympics, you're, you're definitely in a different playing field here. Um, been thinking about you know, coming to Sochi here for a long time. I mean, every time I think about kind of go over the course in my head, the butterflies start to twitter a little bit. Um, so, but it's great to finally be here. I mean, I, I really feel like the preparation has gone exactly as I'd hoped, and uh, now it's just a matter of going out and putting it down. So, 
Well, the 2014 Yukon Quest race leaders are down to about the last 200 miles of the 1,000 mile Quest journey. Also, it's back and forth at the top today as defending champion Alan Moore had moved into the lead earlier, only to be repassed by Brent Sass through the CarMax checkpoint. Here's your Quest standings as of Saturday. Sass and Moore have distanced themselves from the third place racer Hugh Neff after both stopped briefly at Pelly Crossing. Neff stopped and dropped dogs and he will now be pushing with a team of only nine and a few hours behind the leader Sass. Or behind the leaders Moore and Sass. Sorry, Cody Straith and Matt Hall are out of the Scroggy Creek drog drop, dog drop and headed towards the Stepping Stone stop. We will give you another Quest update tomorrow as Brent Sass and Alan Moore kick into the final 200 miles of the 2014 Yukon Quest. And that's all the time we have for sports today. Tune into our special Sunday newscast tomorrow for sports updates from tonight's action. And of course, for more KTVF sports, you can log on to Twitter, YouTube, WebCenter11.com, or download our mobile app. Keep on keeping on, Alaska. Holly Styler's up next with your full weather forecast. Enjoy the Olympics, everybody, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.